Today I'm going to make some magnetic thermal charges from the Mandalorian. And the patterns for this are on Facebook if you want to make some of your own. Okay, so I have these that I got from Amazon. I'll leave a link to that. They go in a dog collar, and they light up. So they either do single light, blinking light, rapidly, or a slower blink. I think both the blinking features are pretty cool. But you're going to pop that apart. And when you do, you can just uh, remove this metal piece here. And what you're left with is just the light itself. Okay, for the actual body of the detonator, if you're making three, you're going to need three number one pieces, which are six millimeter, three number two, and three number three. Both of those are two millimeter, and then three number fours, and those are six millimeter thick as well. And I'm not going to necessarily do any preheating on this, but I am going to take these and stretch them a little like that and that's just so that whenever I glue these together it'll make it a bit more simple to glue these together I'm going to be using contact cement and DAP and Barge are the only two brands I've really found that work great, at least in my opinion. There may be others. I was kind of expecting one of these companies to come out with a foam or cosplay specific variant, but I guess if people are buying the stuff you need, why come out with something different? How this works is you brush it on both surfaces that you want to glue together. Then you let it sit for 15 minutes so that it can dry and cure. Sometimes it'll take up to 20 especially if you live in a humid environment. I live in the high desert, so the humidity is typically relatively low, except whenever we get monsoon season or winter storms. So I'm going to apply this, let them sit for 15 minutes, and then come back and stick them together. I've taken the number two and glued it to the number one, I'm trying to keep the seams all in a straight line basically. And then the number three over the number two. I ended up recutting the three in blue so it would stand out better on camera. Next, you have the four piece, but before gluing that on, you need to take an X Acto knife, and you'll notice there are some lines marked on here. I'm going to cut some straight lines in this. Now, if you don't feel comfortable using X-Acto knives and you don't think this is really something you want to try, whether that's because you don't think you'll get it straight or you don't want to cut yourself, another option would be just to take a strip of 2mm EVA foam and glue that on and then take another strip of 2mm and cut some little rectangles and just glue the rectangles on because the end desired result of this is that whenever this is curved these will look like knobs sticking up on the side of our magnetic thermal detonator charge I don't know what this thing's called all right, there it is with the number four put on. Now I'm going to take my Dremel and round off this and round out the inside and even up the bottom here.
Okay, so the top here houses the battery and everything. So what I did was I glued the bottom in and I rounded this edge off here with a Dremel so that, you know, I could get my finger in there to pop this off. And to initially glue it in place, I used some very thin super glue and just drills it around the edge on the inside and on the outside. Try not to get any too much in on the plastic, just around the edge. And next I'll come back and show you how I'm going to go about filling in this bottom here. So one thing to note about these lights is that it takes a considerable amount of force to get them to actually activate. And I am worried that if I just put them in here with super glue and left it at that, it wouldn't last very long. Eventually the pressure of that and me like popping it out if I needed to change the battery or whatever is going to cause this to just come apart. So there's several ways you could fill this. One is I'm going to do here, which is epoxy. Uh, this is Gorilla. I don't think it matters too much. Since we're just filling the space with something that will make it somewhat solid. Okay, so how epoxy works is, A, much like contact cement or anything else I use, read the warning label and it'll tell you to use it in a well-ventilated area, as in I am out in my garage which is well-ventilated, I don't do this stuff inside my house, and just follow the directions on mixing. It's two parts, so you have to stir it to get it to activate. If you don't get it mixed up well enough, uh, what will happen is it will take forever to cure or it will never quite cure properly. I want this to be nice and solid and hard so I'm going to mix it a little extra just to make 100% sure since I do have a pretty large amount here. Okay. And from there I'm just going to go ahead and let it fill in and self level. Gravity and the laws of science do their thing. Okay, so the other way to fill it that I thought of would be to use hot glue. Probably want to use low temp, or if it was a high temp glue gun, just barely get it hot enough to work and put it in because you don't want to melt or warp this plastic well I don't really want to do that so that I've squirted some super glue in here and now I'm gonna take baking soda and just sprinkle it in there and this is gonna cause a reaction which will cause the baking soda and super glue to harden And a little more in. Make sure it's as level as possible. Some more super glue. Yeah, this stuff hardens like glass. So you definitely don't have to worry about this going anywhere because it's not going to. And same as the epoxy, you want to do this in a very well ventilated area. How it works is super glue actually forms a chemical reaction. It's not like something like contact cement. Whereas with, say, contact cement, you get a... You get a bit of... Uh, adhesion from one side to the other, if that makes sense, okay? But with super glue, it very much so causes a simple chemical reaction, and whenever the baking soda hits it, it just hardens right up. Okay, it fits, it blinks. 
I can still take it out. Okay, it works. All right. Now that that's all done, next thing I'm gonna do is put on the sealer, which I'm just gonna seal it with Mod Podge. I figure that's as good as any to seal this with, but I like Mod Podge, not only because it's cheap, but <clears throat> I don't have to spray it. I can just brush it on as needed, where I need it. And for this, I usually give it two or three coats, but I try to keep the coats even. I'll usually start here at the seams, and then just work my way around. Okay, it took several layers of Mod Podge, and then I just hand painted it a gloss black with some cheap acrylic craft paint. Now I'm going to use some Model Masters Silver Chrome and a paintbrush to go ahead and dry brush this up, make it look shiny. Okay, as you probably imagined, I filled the back of this and put a magnet in it so I can stick it to things because that's fun. Okay, that's going to pretty much wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it and it gave you some ideas for your own builds. As always, thank you for watching and have a great day.